Welcome to short and effective hit and yoga fusion. So that's what this video is, all of those things. Luckily it's short because it is effective. So please come and join me on the mat. But first, if you could hit that like button, subscribe, I would really appreciate it if you find any value to these videos. And thanks for choosing Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. You don't need any equipment for this video, so just come on and join me on your mat. Okay, welcome. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Take a deep breath in. Take a big sigh out. Come on to an all fours position. If you wanna pad your knees, pad your knees, and we'll just start to move the spine a little bit. We wanna prep the body with a little bit of blood flow, with a bit of flexibility here, spaciousness before we get into that <laughs> tougher stuff. And then after you've taken a few of these cat-cow poses, let's exhale into our first downward facing dog and open up the back of the legs and the spine. Get our roots down through our hands. Just really feel that moment of touching down. Soften the neck. And go ahead and lift one leg up and do whatever feels good. Open that hip. I like to circle around with a bent knee. Whatever feels good, you wanna explore that hip, maybe reaching the leg straight and then bent. And we'll lower that down. And just go ahead and do that on the other side. Opening the hips, hamstring, spine. Getting some, <clears throat> again, some synovial fluid, blood movement. Opening up. And then back into that downward facing dog. From here, lower to your all fours position. Reestablish your foundation, draw your organs towards your spine, and then come into your first plank pose. Widen your plank stance. Um, you're roughly two feet apart here, and we're just gonna start our taps. So here's where the hit sort of begins within the plank. So you're just tapping one foot towards the other, back and forth. Not bobbing the hips up and down. This is going to really uh, start to be wakeful within the shoulders, the core, the legs, all of it, and of course the heart rate. Tapping side to side. This can be done here on all fours, tapping the knees, okay? At any time, you can take these things down a level or even up a level. I'm gonna take them up a level, but I'm not gonna go any higher, but you can, I welcome you to. Feet wide, downward facing dog, sway the hips a little side to side, wake it up those IT bands as well. And then we'll walk the fingertips back, create a bear pose at the back of the mat. Feet are basically outer edges aligned with the outer edges of the mat. Shifting your hips back, hinging at the hips, knees bent. Reach the arms forward to the sides or back. You choose what, feel, what feels best for you. And we're gonna do these tiny pulses, almost imperceptible, drawing in, in, in. Don't think so much of going out. You're just going from starting point in to starting point in. Arms again, where you want them. They could be on the floor. Waking up your adductors, your inner thighs, also working the glutes, hamstrings, and core. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Activating that heart rate. And three, two, one. Inhale, slower than you wanna go. Come all the way up, transition to standing. Exhale, float the arms down. Ooh. And we'll roll the shoulders back and down a few times. Then widen your stance and do a little bit of a twisty turn where the opposite heel lifts and you're just kind of shaking it all out. So we go from being very structured <laughs> to softening some of that structure out. And then we'll send the head around into a circle, circle or two, make sure you go both directions. The key to getting rid of stress is recognizing when it's there and then adjusting accordingly. All right, so come back to the back of your mat. 
And we'll do our step forwards and we'll work, again work with those explosive movements in the legs and um, back, back into our hit. So hands to the waist to start. Step one foot forward, the other heel is going to lift, spring back. Now do that on the other side. Step forward and spring back. So <clears throat> you're looking for explosive movement pressing away from the floor to shift yourself back to your standing position. The closer you step to your back foot, the easier this will be. The further away, the harder it will be. If you have low back issues, please do not step way far forward. You're springing, get into your hip, bend that knee, press, bend and press. Now adding on if you want more, more heart rate, more muscle groups, arms reach as you step forward, draw back as you step back. Reach, draw back, reach, draw back. This reminds me of Mary Catherine Gallagher. Is that, remember that Saturday Night Live? Or was it the I'm 50? I always get confused when I say this. The I'm 50 lady. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Old SNLs. <laughs> All right, two more each side. All right, one more each side. And pause, breathe. So we don't want to decrease our heart rate so much that we're no longer in those fat burning, high calorie burning zones. That's what HIT is all about. So you will have less rest than you want, but it'll be more effective. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, bend the knees any amount, walk forward into your plank pose. <clears throat> From here, your stance is not quite as wide as that beginning posture, but the ball joints are not touching. So I'd say about a foot apart. And then from here, right hand touches left shoulder and down. Left hand touches right shoulder and down. Right hand touches the front of the left hip, down. Left hand touches the front of the right hip and down. Now you can stay with that or right hand touches left inner knee and down. Left hand touches right inner knee and down. Right hand, left shoulder. Left hand, right shoulder. Right hand, left hip. Left hand, right hip. Right hand, left knee. Left hand, right knee. Okay, adding on. Either stay with that or you're going for the ankle next time. Right, uh, right hand, left shoulder. <laughs> left hand, right shoulder. Right hand, hip. Left hand, hip. Right hand, left knee. Left hand, right knee. Okay, now, right hand, left inner ankle. Left hand, right inner ankle. If that didn't go well, don't worry about it. Hold your plank, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. Downward facing dog, the feet as it feels good to you. They could be wide or closer together, breathing here. Go into your full plank pose. Now, shift back, bend the knees, let the hips reach up and back, not so high that you're collapsed in the lumbar and not on the heels, right in between, forward and back. This is going to be our next hit movement with this spring action. And I wanna make sure that as you're doing this, coming in and out of this plank, that you are not going so fast that you hurt the knees. So it is controlled as we wake up deeply in the quads, core, shoulders, and breath and heart rate. Now, if you do start to elevate a little bit more with the speed, just make sure you're not slamming into the joints. Keep that movement, that end movement soft. You can pick it up, stay with it. You'll also probably feel the glutes and hamstrings. We're going for the gold. We are going for that really, really high heart rate. It's in there, we just don't always uh, take the time to find it. Five, four, three, two, one. And downward dog or child's pose. If you need to come down and take a little break here and come off the wrist, please do. This time we will take our feet to the hands. Inhale, rise halfway up. Maybe bend the knees there, exhale, fold. 
Inhale, come all the way to standing. And exhale, hands through to the heart. Pause, again, we're not going to uh, decrease the heart rate too much, but you can let it settle a bit. Unlock the knees, unlock the jaw. And shake it on out. I'm gonna to turn towards you. You can stay wherever you can see me just fine. And then we'll go for a crossing of the midline. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. And you can do this touching or just kind of hovering the elbow above the knee, okay? So you can choose. And if you want a little bit more, you're gonna pay attention to what your back arm is doing. So instead of just kind of letting that back arm kind of hang out and just kind of flail around, you're going to reach it more behind you in a cactus sort of a position like the front arm. So you start to get more into the upper thoracic spine, the back muscles a little bit more wakeful. Stay with that turn. If that's bothering you to kind of look to the sides, keep your gaze more forward, please, so that you have your balance. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and soften it out. Roll the shoulders, shake out the arms, widen your stance, draw a circle with the pelvis, and the other direction. And let some of that go. Okay, so we're gonna do some hops forward, little bunny hops here, and the trick is, to working harder, but also working smarter, is to keep the knees bent in the hops and not harden out through the knees. So think about taking three or four hops forward, hands where you want them. One, two, three, four, and back. One, two, three, four. Hopping back changes the way you're working the legs. One, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, four. All right, so. If you wanna change the arms, like I said in the last time we did this in one of my videos, you just let them do what they want. You let them come on for the ride. So you can do a little push, a little swing, a little hands to the heart. I wouldn't think too much about it because you're probably thinking about your legs anyway. You're never straightening the legs. You stay in that bend, which kicks up that heart rate even more. Stay with it, I know. Burning, this is what we want. Last two, three, four, breathe. That one gets the heart rate very, very high. And you're reminded of what the heart can do. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bent knees, fold. Walk forward, find a downward dog or a child's pose. Just a little bit of a rest. And then everybody child's pose, roll out your wrist. You're either gonna wanna fold your mat over by one or add a little more padding with something else for your elbows and forearms at the front of your mat, okay? This can be done on all fours if you're pretty tuckered out like this, hugging the, the core musculature back or in plank as we're ready. Right forearm down, then left. Right hand down, then left. Left forearm down, then right. Left hand down, then right. So that's the flow. And if you don't remember which one you're on, don't worry about it whatsoever as long as you're getting up and down from forearms to hands, making sure that you're keeping that core nice and stable. And the distance apart your feet are is going to change how hard or easy this is. I shouldn't say easy. No matter what you do with the feet, it's not easy. But if you go wider with the feet, it'll help you balance left to right better. And the faster you go, the more work this is. 
Three, two, one. Child's pose. Stretch. And then come to a quick seat, shake it out. And you can move if you had a towel or a blanket for padding, move that out of the way. And come on to seated. <clears throat> We're gonna roll back and forward. Roll back and forward. If this is too much for the spine, you can always open a blanket entirely along the mat except for where your feet are. You can pause the video and set that up. Where we're going from here is either staying here, some of us are gonna stay here. Some of us are gonna use the fingers and press a little more forward. So we're in a bit of a squat here. And some of us are going to come up into a chair. If you don't take your heels close enough under your sitting bones, you won't be able to press up into a chair. You will put your heels too forward and you won't be able to get up. So you can reach your arms forward. You can use momentum here and the weight of your arms reaching and press up chair. For those of you who want way more today, <laughs> you're going to press up to a hop reach back. Roll, hop, reach back. So choose the level that works for you, not the level that works for somebody else. And stay with it. You wanna leave feeling better than when you started, which means making the correct decisions for you. Three more. Two. Last one, come on down, hug the knees in, rock a little side to side. Keep the right knee in, extend the left leg, reach, 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 find that opposition. Switch sides, left knee in, right leg out, opposing, breathing for the stretch. And then draw both knees in, rock a little side to side. Let's part the knees and move the hips around kind of freely, whatever feels good for a stretch. Maybe some circles here. And then a little bit more for the upper body. We're going to come into an all fours position. <clears throat> Walk your knees back. This might be nice to put a blanket under the knees, so please keep that in mind. Knees are back further than the hips, pelvis draws forward. Roll the eye of the elbow forward, and the elbows are going to bend a little bit and straighten. Bend and straighten. So this is an itty bitty bend, and I'm not collapsing here at the lumbar. I am also not taking my hips back towards the heels. It's somewhere in between where the deep core and right above the pubic bone even is active. You're gonna start to really feel this in the upper body even if you're barely bending. The elbows are not so much going out to the sides here as reaching back. So I'm doing this a little faster to make it a little more hit, a little more speedy, a little more um, heart rate. Um, actually, the heart rate's gonna be up no matter how much you do. Just make sure your joints are happy with the speed. Up and down, up and down. If you want more, do it in your plank pose. If you want to go for a full push-up, you can add full push-ups, and I don't care what your choice is for the elbows on that because everybody's built so differently, so however you wanna do that push-up. And release child's pose. Downward facing dog. <laughs> Pedal it out. Touch the right a hand to the left ankle. Press forward with your left hand. And come back, cross underneath you, right hand to the, excuse me, left hand to the right ankle, breathe. Press forward and down with that right hand. 
and downward dog. Look forward, step or hop your feet there. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Choose how you wanna rise. And hands through to the heart. Deep breath in. And sigh it out, shake it out. All right, so our last hopping, hallelujah. We're gonna change this up a little bit, so listen closely, and again, you can change it up however you need. So from here, we're gonna do one, two, three, one, two, three, that's the start. They're little minute movements, and you're not straightening in between. And the arms can go with, or stay at the heart, whatever works. You all start to really feel this in those hips. We wanna keep our hips strong and healthy for all of our years. And this is one of the ways. All right, we're gonna pause in the outward position. And then from here, we're gonna cross tap. So what I'm gonna do is, my, uh, I'm gonna mirror you guys. So my right leg to my left hand and back. Left leg to right hand and back. So you're crossing behind you. The arms to work harder can stay out to the sides before they're tapping. And you're straightening the lower leg when the tap occurs. Now, you're not hardening that knee straight, but it's more straight than men. If you wanna make this harder, go into a deeper kind of goddess squat in the center. Toes and knees pointing the same direction, making sure your low back and your sacrum feel good there for these taps behind you. If you want a little bit more speed, then pick up the pace with your movement. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pause, hands to heart, whoop. <laughs> Widen your stance, breathe, a little lift and lower. We're just gonna burn off the rest of the legs here. A little lift and lower. If you want more, arms up. Trust yourself, trust yourself. Wake that body up, wake that heart rate up. Stay in those high calorie burning zones. This changes so much of your chemistry in your body. Um, I don't have enough breath to talk about it, but please look, out, look up the effects of high intensity interval training on the body and straighten it up. Turn the toes forward. One last couple of circles here with the hips. Whew. Come on down to the mat. Hug the knees in. Rock that side to side. Guess what, we're not rolling up and back anymore. <laughs> You've done that. <clears throat> this time, left leg down, right leg up. You can interlace your fingers behind that leg wherever that works or on the foot. Breathe here, keeping the low back rooted and breathing your right hamstrings. If you wanna extend the lower leg, feel free if you have the correct amount of flexibility for that today. And we'll switch side, bending the knees in, right sole of the foot down, extension, even with a bent knee here, still getting a stretch if that works. Hand to the back of the leg and maybe extending the right leg on the floor. Rooting the low back gently down. Hug both knees in, happy baby pose. You can just go wide here, or you can reach up like you're squatting on the ceiling and grab the outer shins or ankles. Maybe rock a little side to side. We worked those groin muscles. I'm gonna give them a little stretch. And then from here, we're just gonna roll onto the belly and open the front of the hips slightly and elongate uh, through the heart, open through the heart and work the back gently. Forearms down, 
Elbows beneath the shoulders, hands forward, sphinx pose, tops of the feet down. Feet can be nice and wide. And just drag the elbows and the hands back, lengthen the chest forward, opening the front body, condensing the back body gently. And then coming down, taking your left forearm parallel to the short edge of your mat, bending your right knee, reaching back for it and giving it a stretch. So you can reach and stretch through the quads, reach your tailbone down towards the mat to increase the stretch. Breathing here, you can put your chin down or your forehead. And we'll just go to the other side. You might walk the knees a little closer together if that feels better for you. I'm trying not to crush my microphone. <laughs> So you could come down a little lower than I am. Reaching that tailbone away, down towards the floor. We worked those quads, so we wanna stretch them out. And unwinding, child's pose, lengthen the back. And I like to do a little rock side to side. So I take one side of my rib cage down, the other one up, and then reverse that, getting into the lats. And as you're ready, you'll set up for your relaxation pose. Coming down onto the ground, if you want to do a little twist or anything before you come down, whatever twist feels good. I wanna leave, especially when you've worked so hard, I wanna leave some of these options open to you. Um, for me, I like to take the twist, lower leg straight, top leg bent, and stretch here. This seems to give me a little bit more through the hip and through that upper shoulder. And notice I don't look away from my bent knee. That just doesn't feel good for my neck. So make adjustments, what feels good to you. And you might do that on the other side, whatever you're choosing. You wanna find balance in your, in your body and in your life. We all talk about wanting to find balance and sometimes we don't do the things that actually bring balance. <laughs> and we're human, and come back to center. And set up for final relaxation, soften down for Shavasana. And speaking of balance, um, go ahead and release down. Do the ease part. You did all the work, you did all the effort. Find the ease part uh, that's a balance to that. I'm going to be releasing um, 20, 20, let's see, it's 20, 20. Maybe, yeah, still in 2020, maybe December, November, December, my Muscle Meets Mindful program. One day is muscle, the next day is mindful. Muscle, mindful, 21 days, totally thought out. One day builds on the next. So I hope that um, you will check in about that and it will be eventually on my website, lizzybrooksyoga.com. Thank you so much for working so hard and hopefully for resting so fully. I am here for any questions that you have in the comments. Thank you for choosing Lizzie Bricks Yoga and Fitness. Namaste.